Hi, welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about how you can be an absolute boss and memorize everything in med school. My name is Dr. Rich Hilsen. I'm a general and trauma surgeon, and you're watching my channel, Knife Skills. So I want to let you on a little secret. Doctors really aren't that smart. I think people out there in the community think that we have some kind of unique set of intelligence because they don't naturally understand many of the things that we do. And truly, as doctors, we work with each other in big teams to be able to make clinical decisions. The fact is that there is a lot of information to learn in med school. And what really sets people who are successful in medicine apart is not actually their intelligence, but their ability to develop the skills necessary to absorb a lot of medical information and regurgitate it or repeat it when they're seeing a patient or writing an exam. So the people who truly succeed in medicine are the ones that have excellent study skills. So if you're watching this channel, you may be interested in becoming a doctor or you might be in medical school yourself. So I'm going to talk to you about my approach to studying, how I succeeded on my medical school exams, my licensing exams, my board exams in Canada, the Royal College exams. I'm going to tell you my approach. But I also want you to stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be talking about some specific tips that you can use to apply to your studying. Things that I think that are underrated, but are great study tips. So what's my approach? Well, the approach to studying that I use is the absorb, meditate, and create process. Now, this might be familiar to you because really anyone who's successful in studying is using an element of this, even if they don't break it down into those three categories. So absorb is that process of reading or getting the information from its source. Meditation is the process of thinking about it and understanding the information. And creation is using that information to do something unique with it. So let's start with absorb. So absorbing can be very simple. It could be just reading the text. And you'll see people in the library very often times. They'll be sitting there from the open to the library to the close, or even sometimes into the late night if it's a library that's open 24 hours. And I can remember as an undergrad or even a medical student feeling intimidated by these people who would be in the library for hours and hours and hours on end. But I realized they weren't really absorbing the information. They would sit there, maybe efficiently study for an hour, and then their mind would drift. and They wouldn't be concentrating on the information. So that absorbing process needs to have an element of concentration. So you need to be able to get up, move around, maybe change the environment. If I wanted to do a 12-hour study session, I certainly wouldn't do it in one spot. I'd maybe do one or two hours in one spot and then move to another spot. Change up that environment so my mind is drifting less. The other thing about the absorption process is I would say use multiple sources of information. Think back to like how classes are structured. Very often in the traditional formula, you have readings that you read either before or after class, and then you would go to the lecture and you hear that information again. You're getting two types of information, one from the written word and the other one from the spoken or visual word, depending on the type of class that you're in. And so that's a, a repetitive absorption process and also using two different modalities. So I would take it even a step further. If I was a medical student, I would be adding in YouTube sites. I'd be finding Wikipedia articles. I'd be using my textbook. I'd be listening to podcasts. I'd be using multiple sources to improve the absorption process. The next phase after you've read it is meditation phase. I think this is underrated because people don't realize how important this is, but I highly recommend that you take that moment after each paragraph. It could be even a second or two or even a minute, depending on the complexity of the information, but it's important to sit there, reflect and understand what's happening. Do I know all the words that are being used? Is there a concept that I breezed over? Did it actually pay attention to that paragraph or was my mind drifting? Was I just skimming it? That meditation will allow you to start the process of assessing Am I truly understanding this information? After you've absorbed the information and you've meditated on it, the final process, and I think this is the most important part, is to create something. Now, what does creation mean for some people? Well, oftentimes, it's writing notes. You can have a notepad like this, and certainly I had multiple of those when I was studying. But it's important that that creative process be exactly that, creative. 
You need to take that information from the text and make it your own. Use it to prepare notes that you can study from. It should be comprehensive and unique. It's one of the reasons why I don't really like computer note-taking software because it's so easy for you to copy and paste stuff from the original text. You're not really using any active creative elements. It's so easy to just type the, the bullet points or, or the exact words that they used. By using a physical notebook, you're forcing yourself to actually use your brain, process that information and create something new. And it's a better chance that what you create in that textbook or in that notebook will be actually your own content. Now, if you don't like writing in notes, maybe uh, your writing's bad. I do think though, even if that's the case, it's worth making those types of notes to overcome that because at the end of the day, that whole process of trying to write something legible for the future is good and active. If that doesn't work for you, I would suggest creating a PowerPoint presentation that you can use to teach yourself. Create that PowerPoint presentation with a plan for you to actually use it as your study material in the future. And one final thing I would consider on that creative element was that if I were doing it today, I would consider even creating a YouTube channel. I would create a YouTube channel. You can keep it private or you can keep it public. And I bet you that if a medical student created a YouTube channel where they basically created lectures, of everything they learned through their whole medical school career, that channel would absolutely pop off. Maybe, they, maybe it exists, but I think it'd be awesome content to learn from a medical student who's learning themselves. I think that'd be great. So I would actually consider using YouTube itself as a potential creative element for you if you were trying to memorize some information. This whole idea of absorb, meditate, and create shouldn't be too new to you. Anyone who's been successful in school will do an element of this, but I'm outlining sort of that process. If you break down what you do when you're studying to those three elements and enhance that, is it good to self-reflect? What areas am I good at? Am I good at absorbing or do I find myself drifting, my mind drifting when I'm reading it? Am I good at meditating or do I just assume I understand? Am I good at creating or are these notes so illegible that I have to go back to the textbook when I'm studying in the first place? Self-evaluate that. Finally, here are the tips that I want to tell you. And if you're stuck around to the end of the video to get them, uh, you're in luck. So some of these tips I mentioned earlier in the video, but I'm going to reiterate it. So the first one is use multiple sources. And that absorption phase, don't just stick with the lectures or the textbooks or what you're used to. Use multiple sources. Again, YouTube, podcasts, Wikipedia articles, even friends notes would be useful. The next tip I would say is use mnemonics. I know what you're thinking. Mnemonics might seem like it's a childish way to learn something. And at the end, you're like, well, I don't, can't imagine a practicing surgeon or doctor using mnemonics. Well, I can tell you right now, I use some mnemonics on a regular basis. They're a great tool for teaching, but they're also a great way to understand or remember things that you forget from time to time. So I'll give you my favorite mnemonic, which I think is like one of the more popular ones is so useful. And that's the vindicate mnemonic. This is used to help you establish a differential diagnosis. And I still think about it today when I'm teaching medical students or if I'm actually having a problem that I've got to work out. And so that Vindicate acronym stands for vascular, infectious, neoplastic, degenerative, iatrogenic, congenital, autoimmune, traumatic, and endocrine slash metabolic uh, causes. So that, that Vindicate mnemonic is an awesome one. Another one that I use from time to time is the friend mnemonic. Now, this is specific to general surgery. It talks about a fistula that wouldn't close. So some of the things in the friend mnemonic are a foreign body, radiation, inflammatory bowel disease, an epithelialized tract, neoplasm, distal obstruction, and finally, if you use friends, it's a short tract, less than two centimeters. And the last mnemonic, again, specific to my specialty that I use when I'm teaching medical students, that's the TIES acronym for the uh, fistula and ano. And so it basically describes the different courses an uh, fistula and ano can take. And so that includes uh, transphenteric, intrasphenteric, extrasphenteric, and suprasphenteric. So those are some medical mnemonics that are great. The third tip that I would use would be find old tests. Again, I, when I was a medical student, I kind of felt like I was cheating. I felt like I was actually like breaking the rules. But if you have access to old tests, they're a great tool to help you study. Why? 
There's only so many questions that can be asked. By looking at old tests, you'll understand the questions that are likely to be asked, the kinds of questions, the things that are useful to study, and it can help focus your energy. And it can be a good self-assessment tool. If you studied hard and you're taking an old test and you're not doing as well, then you know you're not quite ready for that final exam. And you need to go into that exam with confidence because you'll perform better. Here's my final tip, probably the best one, is swap notes. Swapping notes is two things. First of all, you get to read someone else's notes. So if you're looking at your notes and their notes, you can compare what they might have found important is different than what you might have found important. How they phrase something might improve your concept and your understanding. So it's very useful to have, again, another source when you're studying. But here's the real reason why sharing notes is the best. It's the best because it gives you accountability. If you know that someone else is going to be reading your notes, they're going to be legible, they're going to be strong, they're going to be comprehensive, they're going to be useful. And that forces you to have a serious approach when it comes to creating. Those are my tips for being an absolute boss in med school, how you can ace your exams. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to this video. Actually, if you have any tips, put those comments down below. If you have any mnemonics that you think are great, put those below. Keep them clean. I want this channel to be a positive, family-friendly place. But I'd love to hear your comments and uh, your ideas.